Hello. This is a mid-game level. This is just before we start getting into the cryogenics, because um, we're still using glycol at this point. But this is the level where we have to learn how to really use, uh, really manage our cords. We've learned a little bit about cord management in the earlier levels, but this is where you have to start really engineering it with your head rather than just going with the flow. Um, and I'll show you that here. I'm going to show you the optimal solution for this level, but by the time I release the level it may have changed, so don't get too uh, attached to this solution. So in the, level, in the level before this we learned about this glycol klystron, which has a throttle. And it doesn't work on beams that are this slow, but if we throttle it down, it does. And this means that the klystron works at several different speeds. Now the klystron actually has several outputs. It's got a glycol output, and I've also added in this energy reading output. And that means that the uh, glycol klystrons can actually just be stacked, because they have an energy reading requirement. But, of course, the cords are backwards. So, easiest way to fix that, pull, pop. Okay, so this is uh, capable of doing a lot more work. Let's push, push it up a notch. And once again, pull, pop. So this glycol is too hot. Uh, the glycol is actually too hot when it, the glycol boils off rather than leaving the system. But even the even inside the system, it's just not doing a good enough job of cooling it off. We're going to stop this glycol. That was too hot. We shouldn't have bothered to output it. And we're, instead, we're just going to get a new line of real ice cold glycol, and that'll that'll work great. And we can also bring this all the way up to max. Well, that brings us all the way up to a very high rate of, um, uh, we're doing really well. So here is our quad pole. We need this to concentrate the beam. We're at a deviation of 10 E15. We need to bring that down by about half. But there's a lot of requirements as to how this quad pole works. It needs a blue power reading. It needs a turquoise deviation reading. And of course, it needs power. If we change the throttle, we can change where these readings need to come from. So if we were down here, we could put a sensor rig in and just pull both from the sensor rig. But that's only minus three deviation, so we would need three of these guys to get down to where we want. If we can operate it out here, then we only need one. We just need to wrangle the wires. And this is where the complexity of the level comes in. So we've got blue from here, and we've got yellow. We just have them in the wrong order. So if we pull the cable and we pop the cable, well, we still have one cable extra. Where are we going to get that deviation reading from? The only source, back here. Obviously that's not where we want the deviation reading to go, so in order to deal with this we need to pull, that pull the cable off and then exchange it, and now we've got a deviation reading just kind of walking along in the back here the whole way. See? And what we need to do is we need to inject it between this blue and this yellow. So here, rather than do that, we're going to run an exchange. And uh, and then we are going to pop. Oh, I am popping. Okay. So the blue and the uh, turquoise are backwards. Okay. So we have to work this out. We actually don't want to exchange there. We want to exchange here. But, of course, the whole time, we need to keep this in the background. So what we need to do is exchange and then pull. And we're sort of playing Towers of Hanoi here. We're trying to get it so that we have a, a yellow, blue, yellow, turquoise, blue. And right now we've got yellow, turquoise, and blue. So all we have to do is pop and pop. Yellow, turquoise, and blue. And now our deviation is 10 E6. Put in a pinhole collider. Use up the last of our glycol here. Ice cold glycol and the last of our power. Run the test. Pretty straightforward, except you have to learn how to do this nonsense. Now, I am thinking about ways to make that exchange stack clearer. Um, 
the exchange stack is not a very uh, easy to see thing so I'm thinking about ways to make it more obvious what's going on but I haven't really thought of any and I probably won't think of any by tomorrow so it'll be released in this form where you have to really do it all in your head and I'll work out some way to make it a little bit more straightforward in the long run so that's this level there is a more than one solution, believe it or not, but this is the most, uh, the one I, I am hoping players will find. And after this, we start to introduce liquid nitrogen and things start to really open up for the player. Uh, that's when we start to get into vacuum and ice cold stuff and a lot of more advanced features. Um, but I really like the way that these klystrons can chain and the way that you can use that chaining to your advantage with the quad poles. Anyhow, that's it.